Good day to our dear televiewers and subscribers. I am Teresa G. Reyes, Master Teacher 2 of Honorato C. Perez Senior Memorial Science High School and Cabanato and City Senior High School. Your teacher presenter for the core subject Senior High School Earth Science here at Deped R. Tele Turuan. Stay with me as we focus on this objective. Explain that the Earth consists of four subsystems across whose boundaries matter and energy flow. Just like physical geographers who are concerned with examining the factors and processes that influence an environment, how this work together, we can better understand and view Earth as a constantly functioning system. According to National Geographic and Aspen Global Chains Institute, there are five spheres of the Earth system. Atmosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, cryosphere, and biosphere. Remember, the interactivity parts that form a complex whole define a system, and the interacting parts are called subsystems or spheres. Now, let us focus on four subsystems of Earth, lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. Let's begin with lithosphere. Lithosphere includes the entire Earth's crust and the rigid upper mantle. The two crusts are the continental and oceanic crusts. Lithosphere is divided into a number of huge plates that move in relation to one another. The large-scale movement of Earth's plates is related to the convection currents within the mantle. As explained by the plate tectonics theory, the lithosphere is divided into major plates and smaller plates resting upon the lower soft layer called a stenosphere. Are continents the same as plates? The answer is no. Continents are large, discrete masses of land separated by expanse of water and are part of the plates. So, continents have moved by riding on tectonic plates for millions and millions of years. Another subsystem is the atmosphere, or a thin gaseous layer that envelopes the lithosphere, by which heat on Earth's surface is redistributed through atmospheric circulation. The present atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and less than 1% includes argon and trace amount of other gases. Atmosphere is divided into layers, troposphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere, which are separated by boundaries or pauses. The lower layer is the troposphere where most of the water vapor is found. All weather-associated cloud types are found in this layer. The second layer is a stratosphere, where ozone is present to absorb the ultraviolet rays from the sun and releases some of this energy in the stratosphere. It protects life on Earth by absorbing the ultraviolet radiation. The stratosphere is also the layer where jet planes fly. The third layer is the mesosphere which is the coldest region and protects Earth from meteoroids that enter the atmosphere. Most meteoroids burn up due to intense friction that builds up in the air and seen in Earth as shooting star. Meteoroids that manage to reach Earth are called meteorites. Beyond the mesosphere is the thermosphere, with temperature up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. The portion between 80 and 550 kilometers, about Above the Earth is the ionosphere, which consists of highly ionized gas. The ions in the atmosphere form bands that help radio waves pass around Earth and interact with air molecules to form colorful displays of light or auroras at the poles. On the other hand, exosphere is the outermost layer of Earth's atmosphere, above 700 up to 1,000 km above sea level. Most of orbiting satellites as well as low-density elements like hydrogen and helium are found in this layer. Next subsystem is hydrosphere. About 70% of the Earth is covered with liquid water and much of it is in the form of ocean water. Only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh. Two-thirds are in the form of ice and remaining one-third is present in streams, lakes, and groundwater. Through the hydrologic cycle or water cycle, 
there is constant exchange of heat and moisture between atmosphere and hydrosphere, as it contributes also to the reshaping of Earth's surface through the process of weathering and erosion. Therefore, it is an important link among the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and lithosphere. Finally, biosphere is called the zone of life because it covers all ecosystems, from the soil to the rainforest, from microbes to coral reefs, and from the plankton-rich ocean surface to the deep sea. Biosphere consists of five major biomes or communities, aquatic, forest, grassland, desert, and tundra. For the majority of life on Earth, the base of the food chain comprises photosynthetic organisms. During this photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is sequestered from the atmosphere while oxygen is released as a byproduct. The biosphere is a carbon dioxide sink and therefore an important part of the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the process by which carbon is transferred among the atmosphere, oceans, soil, and living organisms. The study of carbon cycle is fundamental to the study of overall global interactions of living organisms and our physical and chemical environment. In the nitrogen cycle, the nitrifying bacteria under anaerobic conditions attack nitrates to obtain oxygen as a source of energy and release nitrogen gas. Once fixed, ammonia or ammonium ion becomes available in the soil and it is absorbed by the roots of the plants. Nitrogen fixation step of the cycle is of prime importance because it controls the quantities of nitrogen available for all the other processes of nitrogen metabolism. Human activities through the industrial fixation tip the balance of the nitrogen cycle in one way or another. So how do you call this movement of substances through the biosphere? Can you guess? Right? It is collectively known as biogeochemical cycle. Biogeochemical cycle shows the movement of substances from their non-living reservoir through the various food chains on the ecosystem and then return to oxygen, carbon dioxide oxygen, and water cycles. Remember, the sun is Earth's major source of energy. When light energy reaches the Earth, three things happen. Light is reflected back into space, light is transmitted through an object, and light energy is absorbed and captured in photosynthesis. With these ideas, you may ask, how do Earth's interconnected subsystems overlap? Now let's continue to answer, how do Earth's interconnected subsystems overlap? Earth subsystems and interactions among them nurture the conditions necessary for life. The hydrosphere provides the water supply for life on Earth, including humans, and provides a home environment for aquatic plants and animals. The hydrosphere affects the lithosphere as water moving streams, waves, and currents shapes the land forms. Hydrosphere also influences the atmosphere through evaporation, condensation, and the effects of ocean temperature on climate. So, the water stored in plants and animals is part of both the biosphere and the hydrosphere, and the water in clouds is a component of the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. In general, volcanoes and earthquakes help define the boundaries between the plates. The presence of mountains influences also the distribution of rainfall, and variations in rainfall affect the density, type, and variety of vegetation. Plants' moisture and underlying rock affect the kind of soil that forms in an area. Characteristics of vegetation and soils influence the runoff of water from the land, leading to completion of the cycle. Cycles such as this operate to change our planet, but the Earth system is complex and these cycles and processes operate at varying rates and time spans. The Earth system is dynamic, continually responding to changes. We can directly observe some of these changes the seasons, the ocean tides, earthquakes, floods, volcanic eruptions. Other environmental changes may take years or more than a lifetime to accumulate enough modification so that humans can recognize their impact. Changes on Earth may be naturally caused or human-induced, or they may result from a combination of these factors. Today, there is much concern about environmental changes, such as the potential impacts of global warming, 
which centers on the increasing impact that human activities are exerting on Earth's natural systems. Understanding changes in our planet is critical to human existence. The fact that we cannot draw sharp boundaries between these divisions underscores the interrelatedness among various components of the Earth system. The impact and intensity of interactions within and between Earth subsystems are not equal everywhere. This inequality leads to our planet's environmental diversity and produces wide variety of geographic patterns on Earth. However, like a machine, a computer, or the human body, planet Earth is a system that functions well only when all of its parts and subsystems work together harmoniously. This is all for today. I hope this lesson provides you better understanding of our amazing planet as it constantly functions and interacts across subsystems. Again, this is Teresa G. Reyes, your Earth Science teacher here at DevEd Deleturuan. Until next time, good day!